Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Billy Hoya. I'm one of the librarians here at Lone Star North Harris Library. And today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about um, using Shotcut. Uh, we have a libguide for Shotcut, but we also wanted to give you a little uh, basic uh, video that you could follow along with and uh, use it uh, just so you could see how to uh, do some of the things that we demonstrate in the video. Um, Shotcut is a really good uh, video. It's, it's really great for applying effects. In, in Shotcut, they call these effects uh, filters. Uh, so it's really good for applying these uh, filters for um, different things. And I'm going to show you how to use that in just a second. Um, you can do editing in here, and it has a little timeline thing where you can slice up stuff and move it around. But I find it's a little bit easier to do um, some of the, the timeline editing uh, in uh, something like OpenShot or Adobe Premiere or iMovie and then bring it over here. And if you have effects, you can apply them to those effects. All right, let's go on and start up Shotcut. Um, when you start it up, this is going to be the first screen you see. Uh, if you've done any recent projects, they'll show up here in the recent projects pane. But let's go on and start a new project. Um, the view that we have here right now, this is called, um, this is the, uh, let's go here to layout. So this, when you first open it, it's usually clip only. If you do want to do some, some uh, video editing or timeline editing, like we we're talking about, like you can do over an open shot, you can hit this open, uh, this timeline project and you'll see it'll, you'll have this little timeline space down here. Um, I'm not sure why it does this, but usually you can't really see like the timeline. But if you go here and you drag this up, that'll make it a little bit bigger and then you can see all the little timeline stuff. But we're not gonna do that today. Right now, we're actually just going to do uh, a clip only project, all right? So let's go on and give our project a name and I'm just going to name this uh, LSC uh, uh, test. That's a good one. Um, you can change where your, uh, you can see the project folder it uh, defaults to uh, your home folder on Windows or uh, Linux or uh, Mac OS there. Um, but you can uh, set it to somewhere else, maybe a USB drive or something like that if you want to. Um, by default, it, set, it saves to a, a very high resolution. Um, you really don't need to, to, to change that or anything like that. But if you want to, you can come in here and you can uh, pick from some different uh, resolutions or whatnot. All right, uh, not broadcast. That's pretty cool. Uh, so let's go on and close that for right now. We'll just leave it to automatic. Let's go on and hit start. And so you'll have uh, this uh, set up like this. I'm actually gonna close this little recent uh, thing here. So the way this works, um, we're gonna add, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our clip that we're going to apply effects to. And so I'm going to hit the open button here, and I'm going to go to my desktop. Um, and I've got a video here. So you may recognize this video. This is, let me pause that real quick. So you may actually recognize this video. This video is from um, uh, our little welcome to uh, the LSC North Harris Library that we've uh, shown for uh, some of our, our research uh, relay. Uh, games and some other stuff. Um, it has some music in it. I really don't, uh, we don't want to play the music right now because we're going to be doing a lot of editing. So let's go on and apply our first filter here so that we can uh, turn off this music here. So to apply filters, remember those are the effects. All you have to do over here in this uh, filter window is hit that little plus button and that's going to give you a whole list of all the filters. If you know what filter you want to apply, you can just type the name in there, or you can go in here, you can browse the video filters, or you can go in here and you can browse the audio filters. All right, uh, let's go on and apply that, uh, that volume. So I'm gonna do volume, there we go. And I'm just gonna, all you have to do is double click it and you'll see it'll apply. Uh, you can see down here it gives me the option to, to set the level, and I'm just going to turn that all the way down. Um, as you start, if you use this a lot, you may want to set, you can set presets for different, uh, every uh, filter has a little preset. It's not so bad with this one, but uh, when you start, uh, you know, some of the other ones have several different settings, 
And so you may want to uh, save your presets and you can just hit the little plus sign there and that'll create uh, a preset that you can save and go back to so you don't have to change the, the, uh, the settings every single time that you use it. So now we've applied that filter and if I play this music now, you can hear the music is gone. Uh, so we're gonna go on and pause that for a moment. And you can see this is, uh, if we go through here, um, it's pretty much just our video like we did before. So let's apply some other effects to it real quick. Let's go up here, I'm gonna hit uh, the plus button and then I'm going to apply, let's do, one of my favorite effects that they have on here is one called a VGA. So uh, let's see if I can find that VGA. No, okay, that didn't happen. What happened here? Uh, let's see a video. I'll browse for it. It is in here. Oh man. Oh, RBG. I'm sorry. Did I say VGA? I meant RBG. <laughs> I am so sorry. So it's RBG shift, and you can see here it throws everything off just a little bit. So you can adjust. So if you do 50% uh, here, let me see if I can get this to 50%. And then 50% uh, here. You can see it looks just like the regular uh, video here if we play it. Um, it looks just like the regular video. But if you, what you can do is you can shift the uh, red, blue, green pictures and images in different ways. So if I want to shift it a little bit vertical, I can do it like that. Or if I do it the other way, it'll do it like that. It gives this sort of uh, surreal, surreal feel to it, maybe like an out-of-focus projector. So I'm going to do it like that. And so you can see now the video has that sort of uh, like uh, out-of-focus uh, look to it. Um, you can apply several different filters on top of each other, and I'm just going to pause this for a second here. So to do that, you can just hit that plus button and you can come in here. I'm going to do another one. Let's do... Uh, I think static is, oops, uh, oh wait, no wait, it's noise, I think it's noise, uh, doo -doo -doo. and I think it's this guy here. So now you can see how everything's a little speckly there, right? And I can make this more, right, right, or I can turn it all the way down to where it's just, uh, just a little bit there, right? So uh, let's go back here. I'm going to pick another one here so you can see everything's got a little bit of fuzz to it now. So you can keep putting uh, uh, filters on there, uh, as many as you want. Uh, the more you put on here, of course, you know, depending on your computer, the, the slower it's going to get here. Um, let's do something else here now. So let's say uh, maybe I want this front part to be a little bit more shifty or something like that, or I want the... the uh, RGB shift effect to be a little bit greater here and then when it gets here maybe a little less. Um, to do that what you can do is you can insert something called a keyframe. So let's click on the RGB shift filter here and you'll see the settings come up here and if you look at the side of each one of these there's a little icon there and that is uh, that'll uh, let you start um, a keyframe for uh, that particular setting. So if I click this and then I'm going to move. Again, I don't know why it uh, makes these so small, but you can just bring this up like that. And so you can see our video track here on the, the, the top here. But down here, you can see there's this little line that shows keyframe, right? And so let's say at this part, I want this to be, uh, and I'm going to go on. So there's a, you have to do a keyframe for each setting, right? So I'm going to do keyframe, and you'll see horizontal down there too. So let's go on and, and let's say this part, we want it to be uh, really sort of like that. And we're gonna do like that, right? And so we're gonna advance up and maybe right about here, we want it to sort of shift the other way just a little bit. And you'll see it's gonna make that line, right? And we'll just kinda, let's do it like this. There we go. And then when we get up here to, uh, oh, uh, yeah, we can do that. So when we get to Katie, maybe we want it to kind of 
be a little bit more in focus. So we're going to do it like that. And we're going to just, just barely off, right? And then let's go on and play it a little bit more. And when we get up here to Megan, I'm going to back this up. So when we get up here to Megan, we want this to shift like the other way just a little bit. And we're going to do it back this way like that. And maybe one more. We'll do one more here. And we'll, we'll give, give it a shift back that way and do it a little bit like that. All right. So now if we go back and play this, so let's go on and, uh, let's go on and pull this all the way back. So if I play it now, you can see how it's shifting a little bit along these lines now. So it's kind of giving it a little shifty look to it. So that's just keyframe. So you don't have to keep, so when you apply these filters, they don't have to keep the same setting all the way through. You can apply different settings to all of these. Now, as you're going through here, if you're experimenting with different uh, filters, and maybe you don't want, uh, maybe you just, you're working on one, but you don't want to see the other. If you just uncheck the filter like that, you'll see it'll take it away. So right now you can see I just have uh, the static there, right? And then if I click back, then you'll see it again. You can also, uh, I think you can drag these. Let's see, there you go. So if you want to change this, you can also go through here and you can drag these keyframes like that, or you can move them around like that once you create uh, a keyframe there to sort of uh, change the effect. Um, let's apply, let's do one more uh, thing here. So let's say we want um, the static to change throughout uh, this. Let's go on and insert the keyframe for, uh, we're gonna click that, and you'll see right down here, it's creating a little uh, one for amount, right? And so let's start this off like really staticky, right? Like that. And then maybe here, we're going to just drop it down just a little bit. And then as it comes in, we're going to drop it down some more. And then maybe right up there, a little bit less. And then right in here, right about there, right? So that's kind of cool. And then maybe right here, we're going to make it a little bit more staticky. We can do that. And then uh, right before it goes to our next librarian, we'll make it a little less staticky. There we go. And then really just static it up. So you can see if I go back and play this now, so you can do uh, the keyframes for multiple uh, effects here. And you can see the RGB shift is still going back there. And then the static is uh, sort of fading in and out with the, uh, the lines here. All right. So one thing else that I wanted to, to mention here, I don't, um, this is something that I, uh, I want to mention real quick too. So these effects, they apply like um, layers. Uh, so um, this effect, so the effect on the bottom affects all the effects under it, right? So like the noise uh, keyframes, uh, it only affects the original image, right? The RGB shift, that affects keyframes and HTML text affects all these three. So you can see up here how uh, our text here, it's not actually getting the same shift as the, the rest of this or the static. But if we take this and we drag it um, to the top here, you'll see it's getting, uh, it's, it's getting cloudy now uh, and uh, fuzzy and the, uh, the RGB uh, sh uh, shift is being applied to it too. So that's just a really basic uh, how to use, um, how to use shortcut. Um, there's some other features in here you can always uh, play around with. Let's uh, look real quick. Let's show you how to export this. So let's say, uh, and I'm just going to cut this in half real quick. Uh, let's uh, see if I can do this. It's not going to let me do it. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're just going to leave it like this. So let's go on and export this. You've got your, your video here the way you want it. Uh, to export whatever you've done, if you go up here to File, and then we're going to do Export Video. So you can hit that. Um, you may want to make this a little bit better, bigger just so you can see some of the different configurations, and you can do that using that little bar right there. Um, so you'll look through here. There's a whole bunch of different um, 
settings for you. If you use default, that, that'll just export it as um, uh, H264 uh, AAC MP4 file. And that'll run uh, that video and audio uh, encoding with that container file. Uh, that's pretty standard. You can play that on most computers and on um, some other, you know, uh, uh, upload it to YouTube and whatnot. Um, and so you can do all that there. Um, there are some other different settings here. So they do have a specific one for YouTube you can use. Uh, there's QuickTime if you want to do QuickTime. Uh, there's some other uh, uh, digital video for camcorders and stuff like that. And some all, a whole bunch of flash. If for some reason you wanted to use flash, you could do that. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different uh, uh, ways that you can uh, export this, uh, this video. Uh, one really cool one that I want to point out here is this GIF animation. So if you looked at, um, if you looked at our GIF uh, on, on our uh, libguide, you can see we actually I have some examples of some GIFs uh, in our um, How Did You Glitch Art uh, guide. And I actually used uh, Shotcut to uh, make those GIF animations. So if you're trying to make a little uh, meme or something like that, and you wanted to make a little animated GIF out of a video, you could probably pair that up with uh, the, I'm gonna cancel out of this in just a second here. Let's go back to filters. You could probably pair that up with uh, the HTML text. Uh, there we go, text HTML. And uh, let's see, where is it? see if we can save that. And you can see I got the howdy in there and I can move that around if I, um, I'm gonna go on and close this. So let's see, uh, how do I edit? You can uh, move that text around. So if you're trying to make a, uh, a quick, uh, let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna try, if I move that down like that, is that gonna move it down? So if you were trying to make a little uh, GIF or something, uh, maybe an animated GIF, and you wanted to put some text on it really quick, you could use that uh, text HTML and uh, uh, filter to, and then that uh, export it as a, a GIF animation uh, to get your, your little uh, animated GIF out there. Uh, but we're not gonna do that right now. Let's go on and do uh, default. So it'll export as an MP4. Um, you can go in here if, uh, you can usually use these, uh, you know, you can use the defaults here. If you've got a fancy video card, you may be able to use the, the hardware uh, encoder. You can go in here and you can configure that and uh, say what you want to, to use it for. I've actually got uh, NVIDIA, so I think it will do okay here. Um, you can also go in here to advance. Uh, there's some different uh, things that you can play around with here, like the resolution, aspect ratio, and stuff like that. Um, if you need a smaller video file, one thing that you can play around with is uh, resolution. You can also play around uh, with this here. Um, you can, you know, again, the default's usually, you know, fine, but if you want fast or something like that, you can do that. Um, and you can sort of mess around with those to get a smaller file if you want to. Uh, let's go on uh, codec if you want to uh, change the way that uh, you know uh, your audio or what your video is being uh, encoded you can mess with that some but we're not going to mess with that right now we're just going to let it go on and do its thing here let's close uh, configuration here so I'm going to hit advance again and we'll just go back to this and then let's go on and hit uh, export file so give me a dialogue to save this, and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna save this in my shortcut video here. And we're gonna hit save. And so you'll see over here uh, in the jobs window that popped up here, oop, uh, it's uh, running through here real quick and it should be, there it goes, it's done. Um, one bad thing about this is if you don't close these windows, uh, the next time you open shortcut, it'll, have the, the exporter open. So when you get done with this, just go on and close that. And we're just gonna move this back over here like that. And I'm gonna go on and close this job. 
So let's go on and open that video and see how it came out. So I'm gonna minimize that and I'm gonna come down here to the shotcut folder. And you can see here's my uh, MP4 video. And I'm gonna go on and open that up. And you can see there it is uh, with the, the video and the static sort of fading in and out there, right? And then down here you can see our goofy text that we put on there. All right, there we go. So that's a little bit about using Shotcut. Uh, check out our guide, um, and uh, there's a little bit more on there about how to use this. Like I said, I just wanted to give you uh, an example of this. And that's about it.